the specific push that we're going with now with like the CIARD and Paula sort of like joint together thing is like just through years of playing our own music and always doing self-release stuff and kind of just thinking, well, you know, if we do this, then of course, you know, everyone's going to think it's awesome and it's going to catch on and somebody's going to help us put out the LP and we're not going to have to worry about it. It's kind of like you reach an age where you're like, well, even if even if that were the case, maybe you just don't have the right connections or maybe you, you don't have met the right you know, the people that are going to pursue helping you do those things and you really just got to do it yourself. The gallery sort of happened naturally from us living um, in like more expensive areas in town than Rogers Park, you know, uh, like Humboldt, Wicker Park area, and being frustrated with needing to have artistic workspace and rehearsal space and being able to afford that on top of uh, a living space and trying to find a live workspace where we could do all of the things that we needed to under one roof. And that's kind of how we ended up all the way up here. The tape format is, is so attractive. Um, for, for two main reasons, one of them being economy, because you can just, you know, how, however you want to do it, you can do it for, you know, as cheap as you can do it, you know, like, um, and the other one is, is again, like, sort of like this constant conversation about objecthood in the digital age, right, you know, and it's like, you know, if it, if it was as economic to do an LP as it was a tape, you know, like, I imagine that both, you know, we, we'd be doing uh, more LPs, but we'd still be doing tapes. A lot of people that consume tapes, they take it out and they look at it, you know, and if there's a digital download, they might get the digital download, but you know, like, a lot of people that consume tapes maybe listen to it once or twice, and they're very much interested in just that act of going to the show or going to the record shop and picking it up and looking at it, and, you know, so, so I think, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a twofold thing, in that, like, there's tons of economy, but also it, it lends itself to that sort of greater conversation about, like, what it is to be putting out, like, a physical object, you know, like, it's very much in the spirit of just like the preservation of all things analog. You know, it's like it's like there's there's something so familiar I think for people, you know, around our age, you know, late twenties ish, whatever. That's like, and I, I I like tapes a lot. You know, like I remember when I first started falling in love with music. You know, like making mixtapes for people and having cassettes around and purchasing cassettes. I'm like, it's not like there weren't cassettes before I started getting into cassettes, but it's like it did die out very quickly after I first fell in love music to a great degree to CDs and CDRs and bands being like, oh, I have to have a CD, so now I'm going to put it on this, you know, shitty little disc that's going to wear out, you know, relatively soon. You know, I'm going to scribble on it, whatever else. And it's like, I don't know, I, I like I like tapes because it reminds me very much of like when I first fell in love with music. It's a case-by-case -case thing, you know, like we try and keep the, the artwork cohesive with the, uh, with the music, with the with the um, audible components, you know, but um, you know, it's important to us to have it be a, a hand-touched thing, you know, and sort of walk the line between um, a more sort of slick pro, you know, uh, assembly line type of thing, and something that has ink smudges on it, and something that you know like, looks like it was, you know, like the Rats and Snacks release, you know, like are, are hand etched on the back, you know, and, like. You know, just like little stuff like that, where it's like it's it, it's important, I think, to to present it in such a way that it's it's not shabby and it's not it's not just something that's um, sort of an afterthought or whatever, but also something that's not necessarily you know shrink shrink wrapped and screen <coughs> or whatever else. You know, because that's a big part of it. You know, you put it you put a tape in and you hear you know the best quality tape. You hear the tape sound. You know, like you hear the, the, the rollers rolling, and you, you know, it's like, and I think that carries over into the, the visual components um, a great deal. Very much a, uh, um, I, I think that there's a resurgence, I think it's, it's maybe not climaxed yet, but you know, like, who knows, you know, like, it, it, people may be over and people might be moving on to mini disc as the next vintage format, I mean, you know, like, it, it's, it's, it's really yet to be seen, but like, it's, um, there's always going to be people that like to go to the record store and like to buy a record. You know, there's always going to be people that like that physical object because it's a physical object and not because, um, not necessarily because of like the actual um, audio that's on it. You know, so I think that having been said, I you know like I think there's, I don't think that there's a ceiling on it. 
at this particular moment in like the cassette resurgence or whatever, it's almost like dudes dudes that have cassette labels are like are like the new the new like local DJs. It's like you're not like a music you're not like a music scenester if you're not running a cassette. <laughs> you know, it's like where a couple of years ago everyone would be like, come to my DJ. Night. You gotta come to my DJ. Night. I'm at Club Foot and you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it and play all these records that you've never heard. It's like you're not that dude unless you're running a cassette label at this point, you know? And like that's a certain that's a whole certain thing in and of itself. But I think as annoying as that sort of thing is, it's good for cassette labels to have a plethora of people doing it because it should push you to put out more interesting music, to package it better, to make it like something that is completely original. It's like if it's not cassette, it'll be something else in the future. Um, where people are using it as an example. Um, Using it as, as, as a way to make a statement about, about music and, and, and how people consume music.